from hollowing out trees to flying contraband around with drones and even catapulting cash over the border fence, smugglers are coming up with all kinds of sneaky new tricks to fool police and customs officers. Some of these ideas truly are genius, like sewing yourself into the upholstery of your own car. But on the other hand, some are just a little too ridiculous. And as smart as these people thought they were, at the end of the day, if they got caught, they weren't quite smart enough. For anyone with even a slight understanding of the world's economic systems, you'll know that due to the beauty of supply and demand, sometimes one product, like a pack of cigarettes, could be worth a dollar in one country and a hundred in another. Over in Ukraine, that concept is exactly what a group of creative smugglers tried to take advantage of. At the Yagodin checkpoint on the border of Ukraine and Poland, officers stumbled across one heck of a find, 27 tons of timber stuffed with an astounding 25,000 packets of cigarettes. The criminals, thought to be from Russia, had a master plan, hollow out a small percentage of the trees and transport them to Germany and the UK. 55 trees were tampered with in total. What the smugglers didn't count on, however, was the border officers checking the trees for weight and discovering their roughly $350,000 haul. When the officials realized that some of the logs were substantially lighter than the others, they knew something fishy was going on. At the time, in Eastern Europe, smokes were only a couple of bucks, but in the UK, where they were destined for, they sold for as much as $10. That would have been a 500% profit had they not been caught. Smuggling objects like cigarettes is one thing. Sure, it's against the law, but there isn't necessarily an immediate risk of danger. There's a different story, though, when smuggling live animals. Spinning the globe and landing in Thailand back in 2010, a woman named Payawan Palisarn was caught trying to sneak in a real-life, living, breathing animal in her suitcase and take it with her to Iran. Any guesses what the animal was? A baby lizard? A few harmless insects? No. Try a tiger. She placed the two-month-old cub in in her luggage right next to a kid's stuffed toy version of a tiger. In her mind, she thought that the customs officers would assume that they had both been plush toys. While the bag wasn't moving, it sure looked oversized, so they gave it a closer inspection. And, of course, something foiled her plan. That sneaky, effective x-ray machine. Arr! The airport staff in Bangkok realized that something was out of the ordinary when the woman's so-called stuffed animal had a heartbeat. She claimed that she had no idea that tiger was real. Would you have believed her? In the end, she was a arrested and the cub was sent to a wildlife conservation center in Bangkok. Now, time to dive into the art of disguise. Time and time again, officials on the border between the United States and Mexico have squandered plans of people daring to sneak into their neighboring country without permission. Most of the time, they get caught because they hide themselves poorly inside of cars or trucks. In 2001, this guy, a Mexican national by the name of Enrique Aguilar Conchola, disguised himself not with a fake mustache or clown costume, but, believe it or not, as a car seat. Yeah, see if you yourself, folks. Would this have fooled you? Well, it didn't fool Border Patrol either. They found Enrique in one upholstery covered piece at the San Isidro border crossing. This used to be the busiest border crossing on the planet, but we all know why that's no longer the case. Hands up, who loves McDonald's fries? Yeah, that's what I thought. Now, who loves when a bag of Mickey D's fries accidentally contains a whopping $50,000? Mm-hmm, a little bit more. That's essentially what happened back in 2013 when an American man named Rene Becerra Portillo Jr. tried to cross the border in Nogales. That's right about here. While it probably wasn't the best idea in hindsight, he decided to wear his McDonald's uniform while he carried around $50,000 in a McDonald's bag. Just doing their job, the Border Force asked Becerra what he was carrying in the bag, and his answer? Fries. He also said he didn't have any money to declare, but when they took a look at his paper bag and spotted the stacks of cash, you know, where a delicious mouthful of salty fries was supposed to have been, they realized that he'd been lying through his teeth. Why he thought wearing a McDonald's uniform when he wasn't at work would help, we'll never know. The end result was one federal cash smuggling charge and one very upset Ronald McDonald. 
Hopefully, none of us will ever have to experience life behind bars, but that doesn't mean we can't appreciate a cunning plan to sneak banned items into prison. Also known as contraband, we're talking things like cigarettes, alcohol, some harder stuff, and even weird obsessions like ramen noodles. As great as technology is, its advancements can be used to benefit everyone, including criminals. All over the world, from Australia to Canada, England to Wales, people have attempted to smuggle things into prison with drones. Check out this video from 2019. While playing cornhole with some other inmates, an inmate at the Cayuga County Jail Euclid Complex in Euclid, Ohio, had a care package fall from the sky, dropped by a drone. The delivery featured a cell phone, which is of course banned in prison, and a few other less family-friendly consumables. Of course, the authorities are quickly getting creative to stop this new method of smuggling. Researchers in Michigan have designed a drone that catches other unwanted drones with a large net. The Netherlands have trained birds of prey to pluck the drones out of the air, and that's just the start of it. Android users, we apologize, because this next wacky smuggling attempt is all about iPhones. Back in January of 2015, Chinese custom officials busted an overzealous Hong Kong man who thought he could successfully sneak a few iPhones into the mainland by strapping them to his body. It wasn't just one or two or three, though, not even ten, but a seriously impressive 94. Honestly, how on earth is there even room for 94 iPhones on a body? Well, I'll tell you, by using way too much masking tape and way too many plastic bags, and by using every bit of both your torso and legs. Yeah, every bit. And he would have gotten away with it too, if not for the fact that he couldn't walk straight with all that iOS body armor. Back then, iPhone 6 and 6 Pluses were the top of the range, and they didn't come cheap. From head to toe, he was carrying about $61,000 worth of tech. Okay, quick question for a bit of fun. How many phones do you realistically think you could carry without being noticed? Justify your number and let us know in the comments. Our next clever smugglers prove that anyone can fall onto the dark side. When crossing a land border, you don't need to be from a particular area, have an old beat-up car, or fall within any social status. These guys look like your happy, loving, everyday family. Heck, they're even kids in the car. However, as you'll soon see, they were up to no good. Even a couple of small scratches on a car can indicate that there's some shady business going on. These officers risked getting into a heap of trouble by actually breaking their family's car with a crowbar. Had they come up empty-handed, it would have been a pretty sticky situation. But after dismantling the dashboard of the car from the outside, to their relief, they uncovered 26 packages of cash. And it wasn't chump change either. No, these were $100 bills, baby. That's one mighty big haul. What would you do if you came across that kind of money? At this point, we'd probably buy a bedazzled hazmat suit. Anyway, see this dude? His name is Matthew Kale, and his methods of sneaking exotic animals across borders are some of the most unique that we've ever seen. After a relatively normal upbringing, Matthew became involved in the illegal wildlife trade, in which he helped to capture rare turtles for overseas shipments. For him, this was a lucrative risk. People trade reptiles like turtles on the black market and are said to be able to bring in close to six figures doing so. We've seen animals in suitcases, and it's not unheard of to hide reptiles tiles and pants either, but how did Matthew do it? Generally through one of two ways. First, by hiding rare turtles in candy wrappers, and second, by disguising them within socks. All up, the turtles he transported were collectively worth more than 300 grand, according to the U.S. Attorney's Office. He ended up being sentenced for a year in prison for his partner reptile smuggling ring that stretched from South Carolina to Hong Kong. Damn. We're heading back to medieval times for our next unique attempt at smuggling things over borders. Well, not necessarily medieval times, it was 2011, but certainly medieval tactics. If criminals wanted to throw something over a border fence, they'd have to get within, say, 10 or 20 feet, right? The issue here, however, is that cars patrol the fence. It's not just the crossings that are supervised. So, how did a cartel manage to fling things over the U.S.-Mexico border? Catapults. Yeah. They'd load up their packages on one side of the fence, far enough back so they weren't direct view of any patrolman and then launch it over to the other side where their associates would pick it up. These machines worked without any power, which certainly helped. Not a lot of outlets in the desert. While this sounds like one of the more clever ideas, evidently it wasn't clever enough. If they had gotten away with it, we wouldn't be hearing about it now, would we? Anyone here been to Niagara Falls? 
A man named Warren Maynard has two, but it wasn't to snap a couple of touristy pics. You see, back in 2008, Maynard, a 50-year-old fellow who hails from Brooklyn, had tried to sneak what he referred to as holy water over the U.S.-Canadian border. And not just one bottle of the stuff either, he tried to bring a hundred. He claimed that he was returning home after buying some religious items in Canada. But even that was enough to raise suspicion. And when a customs dog started barking while Maynard was being questioned by officers, it proved that there was more than meets the eye. After the U.S. Customs and Border Protection officers tested the so-called holy water, they discovered that it was something else entirely. Any guesses? Yeah, I probably didn't get this one. A medical animal tranquilizer and powerful hallucinogenic. Whoops. 